Hey, I'm Mike Backrell, and today we're going to take a look at a Jimmy Herring line and use that as an introduction to shuffle picking. So let's take a look. So first things first, what is shuffle picking? It's a term I don't hear very often, and I don't know of a lot of players that use this technique on their playing. I don't hear it very often, but I do hear Jimmy Herring use it a lot. So, and that's where I got it from. So shuffle picking is this, this technique where when you play a six note grouping, uh, you know, as a sextuplet or a triplets, and you pick the first note, pull off to the second note, pick the third note, Pick the fourth note, hammer onto the fifth note, and then pick the sixth note. So I'm going to show this using a C major seven arpeggio. So I'll go, you know, G, E, C, B. Fifteenth fret, twelfth fret on the first string. Thirteenth fret, twelfth fret on the second string. So I'm going to I'm going to play it as a six note group in the repeats. So I'm going to do a down stroke on the first note and pull off. Then I'm going to do an up stroke on the third note, which would be the C, on the second string. I'm going to do a downstroke on the fourth note, and around to the fifth note, and then upstroke on the sixth note. So when I incorporate all these hammer ons and pull offs into this, my picking turns into this, which is a shuffle rhythm. Think of, you know, Steve Ray Vaughan and blues music like that. Boom, 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 right? So that's what my pick's doing. Even though my hand is playing all six notes, my pick's only playing that rhythm. This is a good exercise to kind of start with this. Take two string arpeggios. You know, so we'll do a major seven right now. C minor seven. C dominant seven. You can also take this and change the top notes on top. So I took my top note went from G to F sharp, G to A. One other famous example I can think of this is um, Kirk Hammett's solo in the Metallica song Master of Puppets. I don't remember the rest, but back to this Jimmy Herring line. Okay, so now that we've got these basics down and we can play this on two strings, what Jimmy Herring likes to do, it seems like, is he plays this through a pentatonic scale. And he does a lot of string skipping. So here's the pattern slow. One more time. We're going to ignore the first three notes for right now, and we're going to start the pattern here. So what we're doing is we're playing on the first string, pulling off, and then skipping down to the third string, and doing those notes, and then we're jumping up to the second string, and finishing our six notes there. First string, third string, second string, and then we'll start the next six note pattern here. So we're going second string, fourth string, third string, third string, fifth string, fourth string. And then again here, fourth string, sixth string, fifth string. Go on right there. Now you notice that the lick had a little pickup to it. So, so that pickup is just the second half of the grouping. So we're going down, up, and then we start the pattern there. And those notes start on the second string and up to the first string. Now you notice that the pattern that I played in the lick 
has one note different. Jimmy Herring does, I've seen him do this a bunch of times, where when he's playing the pattern, right here he'll jump up to the second, rather than, he'll, he'll jump out of this pentatonic scale and play the second of the key. That's the only difference. Um, so rather than jump up to these two notes, on the third string he jumps back to the second. So, so rather than saying this is 12th and 14th, it goes to the 11th and 12th. And then continues the pattern exactly as is from there, just straight down the pentatonic from there. I've seen him do this a lot. Uh, he does this in not every solo, but he, but he, this is one of his favorite lines. Now, as you're practicing this line, I would recommend taking it through all your different pentatonic positions and trying to work it out through all those different things. And then the place I use it the most is with those arpeggio shapes I showed you at the beginning, but also just taking regular scale shapes too. So if I take an E major scale, What am I doing? I'm just picking notes from the key and I'm just putting them together in this pattern. You know, if, if I have three notes on a string, I go highest, lowest, and then I go to the medium note, the, mid, the middle note, and lowest. And I'm kind of going to a high, low, medium, low, high, low, medium, low, through, through, through scale pattern. It's, some, it's just a, another usage you could find for this stuff. One thing worth noting is that while Jimmy Herring uses shuffle picking on this line a lot, sometimes he doesn't shuffle pick at all. He'll just play the first note on each string and just pick each string once. I've seen him do that a bunch of times too. This is a technique I don't hear a lot of players using. Um, I don't hear a lot of people talking about it either. I found a ton of use out of it. Um, I, I use it a lot in my playing, um, in my rock playing especially, and it's really open. Now, it's limited in the sense of where everything has to work itself out mathematically, but once you kind of get used to the, the constraints of the picking style, you can help yourself to some really cool sounding runs that are really easy to, to get going pretty quickly because the picking is so simplified because of the shuffle pattern. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I'll see you next time.